as maneuvering proceeds over the health care bill, which is slated to come up for a vote on Thursday in the House. Trump's skills as a legislative leader are becoming evident, uh, and their new skills. I didn't know if he'd have them. But he really is combining, it seems to me, the correct mixture of strength and flexibility, determination and willingness to change. He's meeting with the various groups of House Republicans, the moderates who worry that the cuts are too draconian and that too many of their constituents will be badly hurt, and the conservatives who complain that the program he's envisaging is Obamacare light, Obamacare 2.0. And in each case, he's not just persuading them, although he is. He's making adjustments to the package, fine-tuning that make it possible to get the votes of each side. On the one hand, for the left, he's trying to increase the benefits for older people, increase the tax credits that they would get to help them buy insurance, and decrease the premiums they'd have to pay. For the right, he's working on work requirements for Medicaid, He's working on reducing the cost of the premiums and reducing the services that have to be covered by Obamacare, now Trump Care. I think he's going to get the votes to pass it in the House, and I think he's going to get the votes in the Senate. He is proving to be a very skillful legislative president. Never forget in the Obamacare debate that Obamacare is 60% welfare. 40% of it is an insurance program for people who've lost or never had insurance who are working. 60% is for poor people and involves no payment of premiums, no, uh, no taking out of insurance. It's just a welfare program. Medicaid has existed since 1964. The Obamacare program is brand new. In the Medi Medicaid program, people don't pay in. In the Obamacare program, they pay for their own insurance. Obama has skillfully mixed the two of them, so he pretends that it's one program. And he says that 12, 12 million people are going to lose their coverage. Well, about 7 or 8 million of those don't have coverage. What they have is welfare benefits, and they'll lose those benefits. They didn't have them before Obama took over, and they'll lose them now. They survived before, they'll survive again. The other 40% are people who may have had insurance or not, but who now have to pay for insurance under Obamacare. Uh, they're not going to lose their insurance. They're going to continue to get insurance, but it'll cost less. It'll be more slimmed down to their needs and protect them with catastrophic coverage. So it's very important that we realize this distinction. That's why Trump is correct in saying that he wants a welfare program like Medicaid to have a work requirement that people have to work in order to get those benefits. That makes tremendous sense. And let's separate the Medicaid, the Medicaid welfare component, which is going to be cut and should be cut, from the insurance component, which should basically be replaced. Every one of Israel's wars, it's had a significant advantage in high-tech military equipment uh, when facing the Arab armies, but more importantly, when facing the most sophisticated weapons systems the Russians and the Chinese can design and send to Israel's enemies. And much more so than the United States, Israel has really taken the lead in developing methods of countering the Russian weapons, because while the U.S. isn't, thank God, at war with Russia, Israel is very frequently at war with its Palestinian and other Arab neighbors. There's a wonderful book that this is based on called Weapons Wizards by um, Yaakov Katz and Amir Bobot, B-O-H-B-O-T. Uh, weapons Wizards, really worth buying. And it has some wonderful stories that explain how Israel kept its technological edge. <laughs> One of the best is that when Israel was forced to withdraw from the Suez Canal after the 1956 war, uh, and then into the 60s, uh, it needed a method of looking over the canal to see what the Egyptians were doing on their side of the canal. Uh, and uh, the problem is that it didn't have a way of doing that. So Israel invented the drone. And the way they did that was that they literally went to FAO Schwartz, the toy store, and bought four toy helicopters and mounted cameras on them and sent them over across the canal to hover over Egypt and take pictures. Total cost, $825. <laughs> 
Another wonderful story is that when Israel launched reconnaissance satellites, spy satellites, it needed very detailed analysis of the resulting photos to tell exactly where Hezbollah and Hamas were building tunnels. And um, the analysis that the CIA and those agencies would give is pretty cursory because they're looking for large missiles and silos and stuff like that. But to tell where the tunnel is being built, you needed to know if a bush had been pruned or had been moved or there was a tree that used to be there, that kind of stuff. So the Israelis actually hired a corps of autistic soldiers, aut autistic men, whose job was to scan the reconnaissance photographs. And because of their autism, they were able to focus extensively on the very detailed, minute elements in the photograph and tell when there had been any development from one photograph to the other. Extraordinary. Another chapter is about how Israel stayed ahead of the rest of the world in tank development. First of all, initially building tanks with thick enough armor so they would survive anti-tank missiles, uh, which was a big problem uh, 30 or 40 years ago. But increasingly in recent years, Israel solved a number of key technical problems that made tanks increasingly relevant on the battlefield. One was to have a command and control system where a tank could fire accurately while it was moving ahead at full speed and didn't have to stop, move its turret, aim and fire the way tanks had to do in World War II. And uh, by uh, basically combining electronic measures and lasers and all kinds of uh, high-tech equipment, uh, it was able to develop that kind of a fire system. Israel also, also developed modular armor, where a tank could have more armor when it was going into an environment with anti-tank missiles and less armor when it was not facing that danger. Uh, it also developed tanks that could go much more quickly uh, and, uh, and pack a firepower that was much more deadly. It's a fascinating book and a fascinating story of on ingenuity and, uh, and homespun remedies, often facing desperate situations against tall odds. Weapons wizards. Thanks for watching.